So for you Jewish people, for you people who who don't understand Christians, you, you don't understand why it's so difficult for Christians to let go because they love Jesus. That's how Christians are put to bed at night. Jesus loves you. You're going to go to heaven if you believe in Jesus. And if you question Jesus, you question the doctrine of the Trinity, you're going to hell. You're going to burn in hell forever. Well, I'm going to give you a question real fast, Rabbi, that uh, someone had passed on to me that I cannot really answer effectively like you would be able to. Uh, basically, the question was, how did you decide the Hebrew Bible is truth? When I found out Christianity is not real, I've tried to debunk every other religion, including Judaism. So far, uh, Judaism is the only one I cannot debunk uh, and actually find historical proof. But since I have been in a false religion for so long, I'm afraid to trust my senses or my intellect at this point. Jewish people have no idea what Christians go through when they're confronted with this information. Jewish people have no understanding of the amount of fortitude required for a Christian to reconsider his faith. For a Christian, you read the Gospels and the stories are so gripping. And the stories are filled with the good guy, Jesus, and the bad guys, the Jews. Every one of the stories goes that way. The bad guy and the Gentiles were just simpletons. And any rational person reading the Gospels, if you've never read Tanakh, is going to go, whoa, the Jews are really, really bad people. It really, you who are, who are a Christian that has views about the Jews that are, un, that are uncharitable, that are not flattering, there's nothing wrong with you. You've read the text and natural reading. So when Christians are confronted with compelling information, where they're, they realize they have been lied to because they're looking it up for themselves, not because I possess any kind of charisma, not because I have this remarkable communication skill. It's always look it up for yourself. The, the world collapses beneath them. It is very difficult. Hashem should only have mercy on you. Because for m many Christians, it's not like, okay, I guess... Jesus is not the Messiah, and if he's not the Messiah, then faith must revert back to the default baseline, Judaism. It should be that way, but it isn't. And what I mean by that is that if you ask any Christian, it's not a pleasant question, but if you ask any Christian, if Jesus isn't the Messiah, and the New Testament is not the Word of God, and none of that, then who has the truth? So a Christian would then say that the Jews do, and not any Jews, but particularly, specifically, Pharisaic Jews. If, if, I mean, Paul concedes this. You know, if there's no resurrection, your your faith is in vain. You're still in your sins. First Corinthians fifteen. It means Judaism is a default baseline. The claim that Jesus the Messiah is utterly fantastic, and the support for it is a nightmare. But this is not the way Christians are raised. And that's why what I want to do for you is to not get you to be a fan of Rabbi Tovia Singer. That, it's for that reason that whenever I'm asked a question, an email, many of you have received emails from me, thanking you for whatever it is. You notice I, I never sign my name Rabbi Tovia Singer. I n never do. Unless it's an official document from the government, unless I perform at a wedding or I'm, there's something official going on or it's a special mailing. But if you ask me any question, if I thank you for support, whatever it is, it's Tovia. Because I'm trying to wean you away from me. And I'm trying to get you back to the text. I want to empower you. I want to give you back what has been taken from you, the ability to read the Hebrew Bible for itself. Judaism does not rely on Christianity. Orthodox Christianity, lowercase o, completely relies on the Jewish Bible. It claims so. It says so, going right back to the, 
um, to the canonical texts, going right back to the Gospels. They all claim that this is a film of the Hebrew Bible. It isn't. And there's a reason why in 1 Corinthians 15, a chapter I quoted a moment ago, quotes phantom verses that don't even exist in the Hebrew Bible. I'm talking about the first four passages of 1 Corinthians. There is no scripture supporting a resurrection after three days. It doesn't exist. You have been lied to. So I do understand. I didn't, when I started doing this more than 40 years ago, more than 40 years ago, I just thought that, oh, Christians will just find out that they've been lied to and they'll just walk away from it. Well, you know, it's like a stock, you know? Like imagine you own shares of a certain stock, right? And somebody who's in a no says, I would, you know, I would get rid of your, this is a good time to sell out Tesla or Bitcoin, whatever. And you, you just get rid of it. You wouldn't have, and you'd be very grateful to get rid of it because you're not really emotionally attached to it. You just want to, your money to make the most amount of money. If you find out it's not going to do that, just sell it, Right? It doesn't work that way. So for you Jewish people, for you people who who don't understand Christians, you, you don't understand why it's so difficult for Christians to let go because they love Jesus. That's how Christians are put to bed at night. Jesus loves you. You're going to go to heaven if you believe in Jesus. And if you question Jesus, you question the doctrine of the Trinity, you're going to hell. You're going to burn in hell forever. But Jesus loves you. You've been betrayed, but Jesus will never betray you. So much so, he gave his life for you. What greater example of friendship and loyalty is there than one who's willing to die for you? You know how powerful that is? That's why Christians are Christians. So when Christians are confronted with this information, they have a number of choices. They can say, Rabbi Tovi Singh is like the worst person, and he's lying to you. Or they can go... Let me look this up a little bit more here. And then they look it up. They go to the original Hebrew, which Christians believe is the Word of God. And they go, well. So turn to Hashem. Pray to Him and Him alone. Your tongue should praise no one besides the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Him alone should you praise. It's Him alone that every knee will bend to. Him alone that the world will bow to. He will be king. You need a lot of help. But Hashem knows that you've been hurt. Read Tanakh and then surrender to the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When God conveyed his eternal truths, he did it through a national revelation, an unparalleled event and even claim in human history. Why? He wanted the world to know. Any religion that says that that message has changed, it must the teachings of that religion must be immediately jettisoned. I know it's difficult to trust. That's why I always say to you, the viewer, I say, please look it up for yourself. All I can do is show you. I, I can point it to you, but I want to empower you. I want you to read the Hebrew. I recognize that my parents did a remarkable thing for me. They gave me a a, 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 a very striking Jewish education. Hebrew is my mother language. And I know that my my friends in the church, they don't they didn't have that advantage. That's why I'm always saying, please go back to the original. Please look it up for yourself. Please look up the text for yourself. The text will only bring you to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We revere Abraham, but we would never worship him. That's how the the Hebrew Bible has been shaped. We would never worship a prophet. Whereas the Christian Bible is pointing you in a completely different direction. And you will remain in my prayers. Thank you for your thoughtful question. Shalom.